Scott, why would you uh, say this game got away from you guys? Well, I mean, we're we're started the first quarter playing from behind, seventeen points. We couldn't find anything offensively. Um, couldn't make any shots, and seventeen points down. We we're just playing catch up throughout the game. We cut it to a couple of times, ten, and even I think eight, forty-eight to forty, and we just couldn't get any stops or uh, any shots to drop. And then the second half. Um, they turned it up defensively, and uh, we stopped we stopped moving the basketball like we did in that second quarter. But like I, they're they're a good team. This is the best team, best team um, in the East, and you you hope that Embiid is is fine. He's on his way to you know possibly the MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. You just want him. You know, hopefully his injury is just a a scare and nothing serious. And um, speaking of injuries, what's the latest with Davis Bertans? No, right calf strain. Uh, don't know what his status will be tomorrow. I'm assuming it's going to be questionable. Um, yeah, that's a uh, that's tough. To, you know, we need we need a shooting. We haven't shot the ball well, and he actually has in the last ten games or so. He's right at you know high forty. So we we missed his his uh, shooting. He didn't shoot the ball well to start the game, but you know he can get hot and go for four or five and a quarter. Fred. Hey Scott, um, after the game the other night, uh, you were you were really harping on transition defense. Uh, how did you see that you guys did in that aspect of the game tonight? Well, I mean, just all right. I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't, you know, this is a good team. I don't know if they, they scored a, a lot of points in transition, but we couldn't get any, any points ourselves in transition. But uh, they, they got, the, like I said, one of the best players. He doesn't have to score uh, to create a lot of good offensive looks for them. And um, Milton and Corkmaz, they were, they were, you know, hard to stop. They kept moving. They made shots. Uh, and they're passing, they're cutting, hurt us. And, but and then Tobias, I mean, the guy, I don't know. It seems like every year he's he plays like an all star, but doesn't get enough credit to to become one. Uh, but just as consistent as any any scorer, any player in the league, and he does more than just score. He knows how to play the game, and he's tough. Ava. Um, Scott, when, when Russ and Brad are being locked up, what do you feel like you guys need to do to get other guys more um, active on the offensive end, or does it start with defense maybe? To start with well, we, well, obviously we need, some, we need some other guys to get active and get opportunities. It's a combination. I got to do a better job of finding them, but they got to also do their job of running and getting out in transition. Rui, Rui had the last couple of games. He needs to play better, and he will, just a couple of games in a row now. Maybe even maybe even longer than that. You know, I'm more concerned with zero rebounds in the 21 minutes. He's better than that. He knows it. And, and yeah, we got we got to play. We got to get some more guys. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna load up on on Brad and 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 Russell. We have to be able to get some offense and from other guys. And we got to be able to make shots. And that's one thing that we struggled. We've been struggling for a while making threes. Uh, and but we need that we need to find some more guys to, to help right now, and we will. I, I have confidence in the work the guys are doing. They're they're. I mean, it's it's definitely a, a tough part of our schedule. We you know we got, you know, if I don't know if it's the best team or the second best team or the top teams in the league. You know, the next two nights um, or next two games with Milwaukee. So we got to find it against a tough team. But that sometimes you that's how that's what you need. So I'm looking forward to see how we respond tomorrow night. And apologies if I missed this, but did you feel like you saw any lingering um, issues with Brad's leg with that, that he was the game kind decision for? No, I mean, he, he, I mean, he wasn't moving like he would normally move, but he felt good enough to get out there. You know, like I said before the game, we wouldn't put him out there. We, even if he wanted to, we wouldn't put him out there if he wasn't ready to go. And he, he, he passed all the tests that 
our strength and our, our performance team. Adam go through Brad. Like I said before the game, Brad's tough, man. That guy is tough and they did a good job. They put two on the ball and we got to start making some shots. Um, and he has to just keep making the right plays and he, and he does and he, and he will. And our guys are going to start knocking some shots down and it's going to open it up and he's going to get more opportunities to attack. I mean, he, he still, I mean, he didn't play the, the last 14 minutes because we were down, but he, he would have had, he would have had easily a 30 point game or so, even with a really good defender on him. Kellen. Hey, Scott, this was the second game in a row where Troy got some solid minutes. Uh, what did you see from him tonight? Yeah, he just has to keep playing, play with confidence, uh, try to stay best he can in the front of the ball and, and he hit an open shot. Uh, he's, you know, he's still a young developing player. He's not getting a lot of opportunities. Uh, Danny and and Garrison has gotten a lot of those minutes in DB, but with DB status, uh, he's going to have to be ready to play. And I don't know about DB yet, but, you know, there's a good chance that Troy is going to be needed to play, you know, in, in, in good minutes. Hey, Robin, um, what do you think you guys need to do to just, uh, you know, get back to playing the winning basketball you were playing just a few games ago? Um, we got to be locked in. I think we have to have each other's backs. Um, I think we're aware of what our weaknesses are, transition, rebounding. Uh, we have to be cognizant of that every single possession. And we have to be prepared to step up and help each other. Uh, guys, when you know you have somebody behind you, you're more willing to make that rotate, the extra rotation. And um, obviously an unfortunate sequence there for Joel Embiid. Um, what was your reaction or what's your comment on that? Yeah, that's always tough to see. Um, I'm not sure what the results are. I'm sure we won't know for a while, but you know, I hope, hope, hope he's okay. Ava. Robin, talking about Embiid, um, what's the game plan against a guy like him where he's just, he uses his size so well? What do you have to kind of do to limit? Is it just limiting his touches off the bat? Trying to keep him away from the basket. Um, he's going to try to get to his spots, but you, you got to make him uncomfortable. Um, try to take away the easy ones from the free throw line point blank and uh, make, him, make him hit those tough ones that, you know, he's going to hit those once in a while, make him hit those tough ones. I thought Mo, Mo, I thought when Mo was matched up on him, he did an amazing job on him, I thought. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It looked like he, just like you said, was able to kind of aggravate him a little bit and poke the ball away a couple of times. Is that just about being up in his face kind of constantly? Yeah, he, he, was, uh, he was being really smart about it. Um, he, had, he was using his hands very well. Um, I thought when, when he did need the rotations from weak side, there were times where we bailed him out by fouling him, the, the, help, the help defender did. But when we came together, had a good trap, uh, good things happened for us. Hey, Brad, uh, what do you think uh, these last few games, um, what do you think you guys need to do to get back to what you, you the winning basketball you were playing not that long ago? Uh, first, praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and we just got to get back to defending. Can't guard nobody right now again. So, yeah, we got to go back to guarding people. And you, uh, you know, you had the, the left knee issue. How, how did you feel tonight? Uh, I felt good. I felt better than uh, the, the other night after the game. Uh, got a lot of treatment on it today. It was actually, I actually felt, felt good. And you guys know me, I'm always going to compete if it's not broke. Uh, so, you know, it felt good. And I went out and played and competed as best as I could. Uh, so, yeah. Ava. Brad, um, Scott's mentioned the transition defense is having a big effect on the offense as well. Is that what you're seeing when guys, um, aside from you and Russ, aren't getting as active as you're used to seeing? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Minor two of things. 
I mean, I feel like we just stand too much on offense. We don't really move a lot. Uh, and then defensively, we don't get in transition. That could be, you know, replicas of us turning the ball over and, you know, not getting good shots up that lead out to those easy transition points. Uh, now I got to do a better job of getting off the floor a little quicker and getting back. But it's not just one thing that we can pinpoint. You know, we are pretty inconsistent on both ends. And um, what was your perspective on Joel's injury, if you saw him go down or anything? Well, I hope and pray everything is, is great with him. He's having a, a MVP caliber year. Um, but I, I definitely seen his knee was like locked out when he landed and uh, that definitely made me a little nervous. Uh, but, you know, I know he's a trooper, he's a soldier and uh, I hope I pray that he has a great and healthy recovery. Quentin? What's good, B? Um, about Joel Embiid, prior to his injury, he was cooking. What have you seen from Embiid this season that's so different from, you know, years past that has catapulted him into that MVP conversation? He's he's utilizing his back to the basket. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that's the biggest difference is, you know, everything this year is more or less in the paint. He's not popping as much as he used to. He's rolling. He's getting a lot of post-ups. And out of those post-ups, you know, once he pretty much faces up, you know, you're at his mercy. So, uh, especially with a guy who has such soft touch for his size, uh, he kind of shoots like a guard, which is crazy. So you, you have to respect, he's a three-level scorer. You know, that's something you say about guards. You rarely say that about bigs, you know, so he's a, you have to respect him at all levels. Uh, you know, he, he keeps, he keeps your defense tilted, you know, forcing you to double him. Uh, and he's just such a mass, massive guy. He just, you know, he's able to see over defenses, plow through guys. Uh, but you know, he's having that type of year. I think he's just, he's realizing nobody can really guard him on that block and, uh, he's taking full advantage of it. And with Milwaukee in town tomorrow, what is the message that you convey as a leader in that locker room to your team to just turn around and get things back on track? Well, we have two teams that are, you know, they'll be competing to be in the finals, you know? So, uh, you know, if we want to consider ourselves being in the playoffs, if we make the playoffs, this would be one of the two teams we'll probably play. Uh, you know, so, you know, understanding that can't take these games for granted or lightly, you know, you have to, in a way, kind of send a message. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, hold your ground and understand, yeah, they're a great team, but, you know, we we can compete and we've shown that we can beat great teams. Uh, you know, so granted, tomorrow we know who they are. We shouldn't be surprised. We shouldn't be, you know, nothing should be, like, jumping out at us to where, like, we're just in over our heads. You know, we should know exactly what's coming. Uh, we know exactly, you know, what they're capable of, and, you know, who their guys are. They're a, guy, they're a team that utilizes one through 15. So everybody has to be ready to go. Appreciate you, B. Yeah. Neil. Hey, Brad, can you expound a little bit about the defensive issues? Is it just the same things as before where you kind of individual guard your man mentality is not really there right now? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, they, I mean, teams are still kind of doing the same thing and like picking out guys that they kind of more or less want to go at. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, I think a lot of our stuff on offense, like our turnovers and bad shots kind of lead, lead to our defensive mishaps, especially in transition. Uh, I know a lot of times I fall, I got to be better at, you know, getting up and getting back, spring back as best as I can. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, we have to accept that challenge individually. Uh, we have to learn to hit teams first. I mean, you're just fouling their ass 50 times. You know, just let them know that it's not going to be any easy things in the paint, any, anything easy tonight. So uh, I think just our physicality and just our approach to, to the defensive end needs to be a lot better.